Hello, welcome to the next uh, segment of unfolding and unpacking the concept of contributionism. Some of you may be confused at this stage and um, I know that many people are very excited about this concept and I'm going to try and unpack it uh, as well as I can. I'm not going to read this, I'm not going to write it down and then read it to you. I'm just going to share it with you as it comes to mind, as the thoughts come to me based on the research and the work that I've been doing around this and the pitfalls and the, the upsides and so forth. So, so in this next little segment, what I, first thing I'd like to say to you is um, imagine a world where everybody could follow their passion, follow their dream, follow their talent, their natural ability that they've been blessed with as a human being, whatever that ability may be. Because in essence, that what, that's what we should be doing. And, and the brutally, horribly disgusting reality is that that's what we are not doing. We suppress all our natural abilities and our natural talents. Well, that is the system, the capitalist and the socio-political system that we find ourselves in on this planet. That is structured so that the first thing it does, it suppresses all our natural abilities and it forces us to, to be educated with a whole bunch of, um, bunch of stuff that we're not necessarily interested in and then it forces us into a career that most people are either not really 100% happy with but they do it because it's a good career and they'll make a lot of money so that's why they go for it or they don't have a career and they just try and get a job or try and do anything to make money so once again, you see, it's all about money. From the first breath we take to the last breath we breathe out, it's all about money. So imagine if we can just wipe that away, clear the table and say, what is it if you had to wake up tomorrow morning and do whatever it is, whatever it is you're passionate about? Whether it's planting trees, whether it's blowing glass, whether it's finding um, scientific solutions for new energy, Whatever it is, you can wake up tomorrow morning and follow your passion. Follow your natural abilities, your natural instincts. That is what contributionism, in essence, is all about. Now, I know many people instantly say, Oh, it's not going to work. It can't work. Well, let me reassure you. It can work. It will work. And it does work. We have been brainwashed into believing that it cannot work. And you've got to get that out of your mind. You have to get that out of your out of your system somehow because this is probably the closest kind of system that the universe operates on just imagine other planets other star systems other beings on other planets using the concept of money it's absolutely ludicrous it's just insane for us to con to contemplate that so there's a, a, a very well known statement that people make in the society that we live at the moment. And that statement you hear on, almost on a daily basis, especially if, if you function in the world of business or finance or investment. And that, that expression is, it is not financially viable. No, we can't do that because it's not financially viable. No, it's not going to work because it's not financially viable. We hear it all the time. Every entrepreneur that's ever tried to do anything, everybody, any creative person that wanted to follow their passion or do this or do that, has at some stage walked into a banker and a statement from a funder or a financier that says, sorry, we can't help you because it's not financially viable. Well, it may be a, an innocent little statement to many people, but unfortunately, in my perspective and from my point of view, it is the cancer that keeps us enslaved. Because in that statement lies a dark, deep reality that we need to explore. And if you turn that statement around, in essence what it really means, it is not financially viable. What it really means is that millions of people around the world, billions of people around the world, cannot follow their passion, cannot do what they naturally enabled and, and gifted to do, because our social, political, financial systems prevent them from doing so. Now, as you know by now, that is putting people and the system, the organism we call human beings, under a tremendous amount of stress. And when you put people and cells under stress, 
It's called dis-ease and it becomes a cancerous growth. And that's what we're struggling with. It is not financially viable as a cancer we need to eradicate from our vocabulary and from the system that we operate in on this planet. So, imagine you can wake up tomorrow morning and do whatever it is that you most naturally predisposed to doing. That is the fundamental structure of contributionism. But how do you get to do that? Now we get to the really exciting, the juicy part. The foundations and the building blocks upon which contributionism is built. And it's really exciting because it's really a very creative process. It's a creative principle and a creative process. And everyone and anyone that so far in my four years of research has become involved in this get as excited about it as I do because it's exactly that. And remember, creation is part of God. It's part of the creative spirit. The moment you create and the moment you allow people the freedom to create and express their natural ability and creativity, you are growing. You're growing in consciousness. You're growing in spirituality. You're growing closer to God and understanding the bigger things that we don't understand yet and so forth. So very clearly and very quickly you can see that contributionism is a very spiritual kind of system based on the continuous growth of consciousness and this constant spread of love and spread of knowledge and spread of information so that it grows exponentially upwards. The four cornerstones, the way that I've structured it in contributionism, are very basic and it's from those four cornerstones that most other things arise and spring up and become subsections of. And those four are pretty much fall into Maslow's hierarchy. Same kind of thing. Food, shelter, health, education. And then you get security. Either the head or the tail. Security, legal systems, legal structure. Now that's very basically put and, and placed in front of you on the table so that you can start thinking about it. Food, shelter, health, education, and law and security. Um, so I'm going to end this segment here and pick up the next one, dealing with the separate aspects of the four cornerstones of the contributionist system. It's really beautiful. I can't wait to share this with you.